Pennsylvania has a long history of growing quality apples. Our state is currently the fourth largest producer in the country. In fact, there are more than 21,000 acres of Pennsylvania farmland dedicated to growing apples today. Pennsylvania farmers are producing approximately 11 million bushels or 440 million pounds of apples each year. And because of Pennsylvania's changing climate and soil conditions, there are hundreds of different varieties grown throughout the state. Curious students just like you asked a professional apple grower the tough questions to find out more about the life of an apple. Where do apples come from? Apples actually originated in Central Asia and Northern China. And in those areas of the world, they actually have apple forests. Apples were cultivated and refined in Europe. And then when the original colonists came to America, they brought apple trees with them, seedlings, they would have brought apple seeds with them, and apples, of course, they would have eaten on the ships. Once the colonists would have gotten to America, they would have planted their own orchards and harvested their own apples, and they, they needed things that they could eat throughout the winter. So they would have made apple pie and apple butter and apple cider and things they could store over the winter. So how do apple trees grow? Growing apple trees is a lot more complicated than it seems. Most people believe that they just plant a seed in the ground. So you would take a seed out of the center of the apple and plant it in the ground, and you would have a new apple tree. That does sort of work. You do get an apple tree, but you may not necessarily get the same apple tree that the apple came from. This, for instance, is a John of Gold apple. The seeds inside this apple will probably not make a John of Gold apple tree. So since the seeds of an apple are wild, and we don't know what variety we're going to get when we plant the seed, Every tree needs to be grafted. The trees actually start in a nursery. The nursery will go out to an orchard and they'll go to a tree that has really pretty apples on and the apples are perfect. And, and that's the tree that they'll use to get their budwood from. The budwood is what you're going to use to graft to get the new tree. So this tree is a stamen wine sap tree. So if we wanted to grow a new stamen wine sap, what the nurseryman would do is he would come out into the orchard and he would get a bud off of that tree. And inside that little bud is all the genetic information needed to grow a new stamen wine sap apple tree because it came off of a stamen wine sap tree. What do you do while you wait for the apples? Growing apples is a 365 day a year job. A lot of people believe we just pick the apples in the fall and that's all there is to it. We actually start uh, as soon as the apples are harvested in the fall, we'll start working on next year's crop. Over the summer, we do tests. We test the soil for soil nutrients. We test the leaves to see what nutrients the, the trees have in them. Over the winter, we, every tree has to be trimmed. We go over every tree, uh, we remove probably 25 to 50% of the limbs off the tree. And that helps with a lot of things. That helps with the size of the apples and the quality of the apples. That helps us uh, with pest control. That helps us so that the wind can blow through the trees. If we take some of the limbs out, the sunlight can get down into the center of the tree. Sunlight's very important because of photosynthesis, which is what makes the, the apples grow and makes the trees healthy and strong. Um, it also makes the limbs, by trimming the, the trees in the winter, makes the limbs sturdier so they can hold the crop. When these little trees are full of apples, there can be four or 500 pounds of apples hanging on a tree. And with, with the wind blowing and when thunderstorms come through, you need those trees to be nice and strong so they can uh, hold a crop of apples. So by trimming the trees in the winter, we shorten the limbs and make them sturdy so they can hold the crop. How do all the clusters of white flowers turn into apples? In the springtime of the year, and usually the end of April, beginning of May, the apple trees have flowers all over them, apple blossoms. This is what an apple blossom looks like. And this is how the whole process really begins in the spring. So some, some leaves will unfold and the apple blossoms will open. And then the honeybee comes along and she visits the flowers. She goes from flower to flower to collect the nectar. While she's doing that, she gathers a lot of pollen on her furry body and she transfers that from flower to flower. The honeybees are very important. They have a very important job. If you look underneath the flower, that's where the apple will grow. So that once the flower is pollinated, the stem of the flower becomes the stem of the apple. So this is where the flower is, or where the flower was. The flower petals fall off, and this is the leftover sepals from the, from the bottom of the flower. So when the apple originally starts to grow, it's up like this. And as the apple grows during the season, it gets heavier and heavier, and it hangs upside down. 
And then when we're ready to harvest the apples, the flower's on the bottom now, and the stem of the flower is now the stem of the apple. Can an apple tree grow without bees? Apple trees can grow without bees, but the honeybees and the bumblebees are very, very important for the pollination. There are actually hundreds of insects that help with the pollination. The wind actually helps spread the pollen throughout the orchard. So there are other ways for the pollen to be transferred, but the honeybees and the bumblebees are the most efficient ways of transferring the pollen from flower to flower. What else helps the apples grow? There are many important things when growing a tree. But the most important thing is the soil. It all starts with the soil. So we do things like we take tests of the soil to see what nutrients are in the soil before we plant the trees. And then we can make adjustments with fertilizer or with compost. We can adjust the nutrients in the soil so that the tree grows to be, gets off to a good start and becomes real healthy and strong. We've got to keep the weeds away from the bottom of the tree. We have to keep the animals away from the tree. This guard is to keep the rabbits and groundhogs from chewing on the tree and girdling the bark. And then once the tree is up and growing, it's very important that there's good sunlight and good air blowing around the tree and water. A lot of growers will supply water to their trees with irrigation. We rely on the rain for our water, but if we get a really dry summer with a real young tree like this, we will actually bring water out with a tank on a truck and put it around the bottom of the tree to help keep the tree alive for those first few years. How do you know when the apples are ready to be picked? Knowing when the apples are ready to be picked is a very important part of the job because apples need to be picked at the correct time so that we can store them and so that they taste good and crisp. So when we get close to the harvest time, we start going out and pulling samples of apples off the trees and checking them for some very important things. But the most important thing is how firm the apple is. So we, to check the firmness of an apple, we use what's called a penetrometer. And the way we do that is we take a little bit of skin off of the two sides of the apple the side that's red and the side that was on the back that was in the shade because the sun's what turned the apple red, so this part was back in the shade of the tree. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell me how many pounds of pressure it takes me to push this probe into the apple. So that took about 11 pounds on that side and about 14 pounds on that side. So we'll take the average of that. So 13 and a half, 14 pounds is about where that apple is in firmness. Now that tells me how crisp it's going to be when you bite into it. When an apple is green and not ready to pick, it'll be a lot higher than that. It'll be 16 or 18 pounds. So we know it's too hard, it's too green, and it's not ready to pick. But once the apple starts getting about right, about 14 pounds for a honey crisp, then we would harvest them because we know at that stage we have a chart. Every apple variety is different. So for a honey crisp at about 14 pounds, we'll pick the apple. We'll put them in the refrigerator in a cold storage and we can keep them for a few months and keep selling them as people need them. The other thing we'll do is we'll continue to pull the apples out of our cold storage and we'll continue to test them with a penetrometer to see how firm the apple is. Once the apple gets to a point where it's no longer firm and crisp and juicy and can be eaten out of hand, then we'll use those apples to make other things like applesauce or apple cider or apple juice or apple butter and those things are all excellent and those, so the apple still has a good use even after it's not good and crisp and ready to eat fresh out of hand. What is harvest season like? Fruit growers who grow uh, fresh market apples like I do, our fruit harvest season is a very long extended time. We start picking the first varieties of apples in the middle of July with a Lodi or early transparent apple. And we pick apples all fall long, July, August, September, October, even into November. So in the middle of September, we're picking things like Yellow Delicious and Red Delicious. In the end of October, we're picking things like Granny Smith. In November, sometimes the week before Thanksgiving, we're picking Pink Lady, which is the last variety we pick here. So it's a very long season. It takes a lot of work. All the apples are picked by hand. There's no machines to pick the apples. So it takes a lot of hand labor and a lot of work to pick apples all day long and put them in this bucket, climb the ladders to pick the apples off the trees and get them into storage before anything happens to them. As soon as they're picked off the tree, they need to get into a refrigerated room as fast as possible to prevent them from decaying any further. What happens after all the apples are picked for the season? Once the apples are harvested, they go into big bulk bins like the bin behind me. 
the bin of apples are picked up by the tractor and then taken into a cold storage as quickly as possible. The longer the apples stay warm, the shorter the amount of time we can store the apples. So we get them into the cold storage and get them cooled down. That way we can store them for a long time. Just like when you leave your milk out in the counter and it spoils, the same thing will happen to an apple. An apple doesn't stay good if it stays in the warm. If you keep it in the refrigerator, you can keep it for a long, long time. Is it true that an apple a day will keep the doctor away? There's a lot of truth in that statement. An apple is very healthy for you. It's packed with nutrients and vitamins. So because of that, an apple a day really does help keep the doctor away. It also makes the dentist happy as well because it helps clean your teeth and cleans the bacteria out of your mouth when you eat an apple. The doctor really does appreciate when you eat an apple a day. Using science, technology, and generations of farming knowledge, Pennsylvania apple growers work hard to bring the best variety straight from the farm to you. As a national leader in apple production, our local growers work hard to instill civic pride and preserve farmland in Pennsylvania for future generations. It's safe to say that Pennsylvania is at the core of the apple industry.